I couldn't resist. It took a bite out of this and it's amazing, but I want to show you guys inside. Mm. Yeah, these go by like that. How many have you had? This is my first one and then right now with you guys, I'm going to have another. <laughs> Thanks for making it. Club. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some chicken skewers. I'm also going to be adding the recipe to the cilantro in uh, lime rice along with a nice uh, veggie slaw to go with this recipe. So if you're interested, please keep watching. To your chicken, you want to add one tablespoon of baking uh, soda. What happens with this is it helps soften your chicken and it also takes away that stench that you get from chicken. So you're gonna mix this around with your chicken and you're gonna let that set for about five minutes and then we're gonna rinse it, okay? So after your five minutes, you just wanna rinse this and wash it about two to three times and then just um, strain it and put it on a plate and then we'll be ready for a marinade. Okay, now let's go ahead and prepare our marinade for these delicious skewers. There's one thing that I battled in life was making chicken skewers, but not anymore and neither will you, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to add all our liquid ingredients to our soy sauce. Give that a quick stir. And then I'm gonna add the cornstarch to the water. And I'm just gonna mix that nicely. Because when we put this in the bag, it's gonna clump up and it's not gonna, it's not gonna get diluted. And we just want it to be nice and smooth. Perfect. I'm using two pounds of tenderloin. Um, I'm going to suggest that you use the piece of chicken that you like. I know that this works best with chicken breast and tenderloin and with tenderloin it cooks a lot faster so that's the reason I always go with tenderloin. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our liquid and this, uh, this portion of the marinade is good for about six pounds of chicken uh, tenders. I think marinade tends to be very forgiving. So in your little marinade bag or container that you choose, um, go ahead and add your sugar. I'm using fresh ginger, but that doesn't mean you can't use powdered ginger. The only thing I'm gonna say for this recipe is that keep an eye out for some ginger and then next time that you make it, try it with the fresh ginger and you're gonna see the difference. Garlic. You know, once you have the sesame oil, soy sauce, garlic, ginger, you're set. Like, my body's already happy. I'm excited for this. For our pepper, if you like more of a spicy kick, you can add one tablespoon. If you kind of like a mild, go for half a tablespoon. And then if you're not too sure, just sprinkle it a little bit in, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon, and that should work for you. I'm going with half a tablespoon. And one bay leaf. Just one. Give it a nice little gentle massage. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna marinate our chicken tenders. And you can get away with six hours, 12 hours is perfect, 24 hours is ideal. It's gonna be, it's gonna depend really on how much time you have and if you need these quickly, so. Go ahead and marinate these and we're going to skewer them up until we're ready to serve them. I figure that's a lot easier and what you want to do while this is marinating is you want to soak your skewers in water. Even if it's overnight, you just want to make sure that you soak them for at least two hours to avoid the burning on your stick because I'm guilty of that and I still do it till this day. So we'll see how this turns out for us. <laughs> To 
to your pan, you want to add a little bit of oil. And we're going to put this pan on a medium low heat. I'm going to be making two cups of rice and that's what I have here. Stir your rice around to make sure that you coat it with the oil that we have in here. And what we're looking to do is we're going to cook this just slightly. You don't want to turn it into a golden uh, color at all. You just want it to go from translucent to the white rice and then immediately um, remove it from the heat because you don't want it to continue to cook and change the color of our rice. I have a, ri a cilantro rice that's a little bit different that I use for Mexican dishes. This is a more universal uh, recipe that applies to whatever you want to pair it with. I know you guys asked me for um, the Mexican style cilantro, uh, cilantro and lime rice, and I can do that one for you guys on another video. But this is this is pretty much my favorite one. Okay, so my rice just turned translucent. I put my heat on a simmer just so it doesn't continue to cook it too much before I get to my next step. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to add your water. Okay, and I'm adding warm water. It speeds up the cooking process for me. Okay, what you want to do is you want to follow the directions on the back of your rice. My rice says that it would like two cups of water per cup of rice. So in here I have four cups of water, okay? What I'm going to add to this portion, I'm going to add my lime juice and I zested a little bit of that lime and I'm going to add it and stir it in here. Once you've mixed your water and lime juice throughout your rice, you want to bring it up to a boil, okay? And you want to make sure that you always have a lid. I'm actually really bad about doing this, but you want to make sure you have a lid for this particular rice because it's going to help the steam and keep this rice super fluffy for us. So I'm going to bring it to a boil, and once it comes to a boil, I'm going to put it on a low. Now that my rice has boiled, I give it one quick stir. And we're going to go ahead and put the lid on it. Once you brought your rice to a boil, you want to turn it down to a low heat and let this steam up well together so that we have a nice delicious fluffy rice. Looks like our rice absorbed the lime juice and the water beautifully. It's nice and soft. So what you want to do right now, you want to give it a little bit of a stir so the steam can start coming out. What you want to avoid is to have your pan too hot to where it cooks your cilantro because we want it to look very nice and fresh, okay? So you're gonna let this sit uncovered for about three to four minutes before we can begin to add our cilantro. It's been four minutes and there's still a little bit of steam in here but not as much as there was when we first turned this off. So it's not gonna cook our cilantro and that's gonna allow it to give it a good flavor. I have half a bunch which adds up to a little bit over a cup chopped up with stems and everything. We're going to have cilantro and lime rice. It's going to taste like it. So what we want to do now is we just want to give it a quick mix. And the cilantro options, it's going to be up to you on how much you want to use. Because the warmness that's still in the rice, the vapor is still going to cook it down just a little bit enough to wilt it and it won't be as, as bold. And it also depends on how finely you chop your cilantro in. As you can see, I wanna see it. <laughs> if I wanted to add rice in here, um, when would I add it? I mean, not rice, um, salt. Salt? If you guys want salt in here, you can add it when we add the lemon juice, and I would suggest you add about one fourth. That should be enough to handle um, the flavor and the seasoning in here. But for me, I, I don't feel it's necessary since all the other ingredients that I'm going to be consuming have a lot of salt. So, oh, okay. And you guys know that I use a lot of salt when I cook. So this is going to be like the bread of the dish. It's going to soak up the... Yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and the thing is that, you know, they say rice is very bland. 
but when it was cooking i can smell it i i love rice i can eat it with like spoonful it okay. tastes so good to me i can taste the flavor in rice Okay, I'm gonna begin to chop, and I like to chop this one not too fine and not too thick. You can pick both cabbages, or you can just do it with green or just with purple, and this is gonna work out uh, just the same. Hope you guys can see that. Hold it really close. Okay, the best part of this slaw is that you get to add as much cabbage and as much um, ingredients that you want to make. So if you want to make a small portion, you can still make a small portion. The only thing that would change is your salt, pepper, and the amount of lime that you're using. Everything else, it's up to your discretion. All right, now some cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can use parsley. Um, I, I would say, not the curly one, use the, um, the flat parsley. That would taste good with this. Um, but for me, I've just been eating massive amounts of cilantro. I am i don't know what it is, but my body's been obsessed with it. So, if mom's obsessed with it, everybody's gonna be obsessed with it. Make sure you use your stems. Those are what's bringing in the flavor. Now that we got all that chopping out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and squeeze a lime in here. You can go with one to two limes. It's gonna depend on your lime because sometimes they're really hard and you don't get any juice. So base it off of that. You can use lemon juice as well. If you're feeling brave, go ahead and squeeze a blood orange with your lime in here and Watch the magic happen. <laughs> Those are so good. I'm gonna need two of these limes because I'm not getting enough juice out of here. How is that one? Is it juicy? Ooh, Cloud found me a juicy one. I claim the fame. Mm -hmm. A juicy one? Mm -hmm. I, claim <laughs> I claim juicy one. Thick and juicy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, that one was really juicy. I'm going to keep it down to one and a half for now. Um, if you want to make this a little bit spicy, give it a good kick, you can use a serrano. But for me, I'm going to chop it up and put it on the side so that way the kids can enjoy it because I'm not sure if they're too fond of the serrano flavor. Some days they are when it's with salsa, but anything else they're like, oh. But then again, they eat like really spicy Korean food. It depends on the dish, guys. It depends on the dish. <laughs> Woo! That one's spicy, I can smell it. So your salt and your pepper are gonna be to taste. A safe amount for your salt would be half a teaspoon and maybe one fourth of pepper and start from there and build gradually um, for the flavors once you've combined and mixed everything together. If you want, you can put some avocado on the top. I wouldn't mix the avocado in here unless you're gonna eat it at that moment. So if you're gonna let your um, slaw rest, maybe keep the avocado towards the end, okay? Which is what we're gonna do. Typical behavior for me. You guys know I'm gonna pick the smallest bowl to get everything mixing. Uh, pick a bigger bowl and then just shake it up, which I think I should do. My 
my kids are not too much into fresh tomatoes right now. That's why I only chopped one and kind of sneaked it in here because at least some of those pieces will get into their bellies. What you want to do after you mixed all your ingredients is you want to taste it. So let's go ahead and give this a taste. Make sure you get a little bit of everything in here. I'm set. This is perfect. I can taste every single uh, vegetable in here. I can taste a tomato. Like everything is well combined and it's gonna go beautifully with our skewers and our rice, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and refrigerate this um, until we're ready. Now it's goat time. We're about to skewer this chicken up. <laughs> My skewers were way too long for my pan. What you're gonna wanna do is you wanna get some scissors, a knife, crack them, and they're all different sizes, but they're gonna, they're gonna work out. I have Cloud on standby. I know you guys get so worried with chicken, and just so you guys know, so do I. Like, I mean, I'm wiping, cleaning this house nonstop, so we're safe. But if I need to use anything, Cloud's here for support. Okay. Who's ready to skewer? Not me. Of course. I'll do it, guys. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, it smells so good. You know, this recipe is a very forgiving recipe. It works really good with, um, with beef. So if you have maybe uh, some chuck, some ribeye, get ready. It's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and out type of thing. My family loves chicken. Um, you can mash these up to make them a little bit thinner and cook a little faster for you, but um, I think my family would trade me in. They'd be like, no girl, we want the thick, juicy chicken. <laughs> they would be grateful, but they would say, hey, maybe next time. <laughs> Give us real chicken. <laughs> or they would eat like six gears each. When I do these and I fry them like tenderloins and I smash them up for a salad, oh, they love that. Because you can just grab it because it's so thin and you just, it's like eating that chicken chip. Ah, uh, you guys thought I was going to say chicken. You know what? For my story time, not happening, guys. If you noticed, I haven't been having such a potty mouth. I've been listening to your guys' request and also in my day-to-day -day life, I was pleasantly surprised to figure out that I haven't been using so many curse words because I've been recording with no curse words. It's possible. <laughs> Never would I have imagined that I would stop having such a huge potty mouth and eh, it's the same thing. I'm not personally offended by bad words, curse words, because um, there's some things that you just can't replace a curse word for. You got to express it. Yeah, I agree. I think if you're saying it with intention, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Or kids that haven't expanded their vocabulary. Yeah, my kids <laughs> better not. Oh, they don't know. Not your kids. I'm talking about kids in general. They better not. <gasps> your kids say yikes. Yeah. <laughs> like oh that. my goodness. It's uh -huh. a big one for us that we transitioned to. How about your, your baby's cloud? What was the alternative to... To the words uh, my daughter said her first curse word and she felt super guilty when she was 16 and a half mm -hmm. she said s-h-i-t mm -hmm. and she was devastated but she she meant it I mean it was she was really upset yeah yeah well it's high school I mean it's gonna happen yeah she apologized and all that I said it's okay so you were I get it I understand but that was first and then um, Things that they substitute, they really don't. You know them. They don't really. What do they? What do they say? Like Isaiah, maybe I would think he would substitute something. I don't know. Like when Bio was at public school, he picked up on a lot of like curse yeah. words, like from other kids. Mm -hmm. So when he came home and he was still learning his, um, he was still engaging with learning new uh, vocabulary words, sight words, and all these things. And he came back and he said a curse word, and I had to correct him, and I felt so bad for him because he didn't even know it was like a bad thing. You know what I mean? Oh, they say what the heck. What the heck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I, I, like I'll like i say shoot. Like, I'll catch myself to not even say, like, the curse words anymore. But 
Yeah, I thought you guys would be proud. I've been getting the comments from our lovely club that you guys are enjoying it. You get to enjoy it with your grandkids because I'm not cursing. If you guys just started watching me, if you go further back in my videos, like if you see me in a mukbang setting, it's very likely that there's gonna be an S word or an F bomb in those mukbangs. And I mean, I don't know how else to um, warn you guys, but on those in particular, in the earlier mukbang style recipes, there is curse words, beware. I'm gonna be like Ralphie's mom with the bar of soap. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that movie's out of control. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on skewering these for us and then I'll meet you guys when we're ready to heat these up. So you're gonna push out and you wanna go through the parts that have the thicker part of the meat. You're gonna come back in and bring it this way. Pick another good like half an inch to an inch and then push it out and then come back. Then you're set. You get some of these little hangy parts, but you're okay. Have you ever tried this marinade with um, veggies or do you think it would be too overpowering? Um, it would be good with veggies, but I think if you're going to um, grill or this kind of uh, stuff for veggies, you kind of have to reduce this mm -hmm. and pour it over instead of marinating it in there. Yeah, it gives you it soggy. Yeah, it changes up the dynamic of the vegetables and it'll get them very, very soggy. Okay, that was for a friend. <laughs> that was for <laughs> <laughs> This is really good with shrimp and beef. It's It's good. You just gotta be careful if you marinate um, your shrimp with this. You don't need to marinate it that long because then the um, vinegar or the lime in here will end up cooking it. Oh, and you, you get know a my friend flavor. well. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very hot pan. I had it on a high for a good two minutes. Now I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of oil. That looks more like half a tablespoon, right? Just drizzle some oil on here, okay? Um, and put your pan on a medium heat. I'm gonna have mine on a medium, medium low setting just so that you guys can hear me well. But on your end, you wanna go with the medium, medium high, don't go on high because you might burn these, okay? I feel like you're reading my, my diary. Really? Why? Because that's something you would do? <laughs> something that I have done. <laughs> I've had my fair share of problems with the skewers. One of the big ones that I have is when I buy the um, the Filipino um, pork skewers. Oh. My oh my god, everybody loves them. Those always end up getting burnt. That's exactly what I burned. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh, but wow. the kids ate them anyway. Yep. <laughs> and it's interesting because they're soaking in like a marinade the whole time. So I wonder if they pre-soak them or they just go to town on them. I don't know, but you're saving a lot of dinners here. I am gonna save some dinners. Okay, guys. Now when you see that your pan's hot. You want to add your chicken. Every little guard that I've ever purchased, my stove has managed to demolish it. Plastic, non-stick, other metal ones. This one right here is from The Good Cook and I found it at my local grocery store. I'll try and keep a link in the description area and I'll keep you guys posted if it works or not. Yeah, don't sleep on uh, your local grocery store. That's the stuff don't sleep Yeah, on. our grocery store has a bunch of like last minute stuff. I love it. Okay, I'm going to cook these and before I turn them, I'm going to make sure that I time this for you and let you know how long it took on my end. And I noticed that I have a lot of crust on this side, so in order to loosen that up, I'm going to add a little bit of water. it's still really good flavor you have to get it right before 
um, that crust turns into something that's burnt. There we go. You see all that liquid loosening up the delicious flavor at the bottom? It's kind of like when you make a pot roast, you know? But in skewer style. So this should take you anywhere between uh, 13 to 15 minutes to cook. And what you're going to do is you're going to cook this on a very low heat um, for the remaining uh, parts of the cooking process. I'm trying to get one of my skewers to absorb this delicious juice on this side. You might have to do what you can over here, okay? Another thing you can do is you can get a little brush and come brush it over. Remember guys, it's your kitchen. You can do whatever you want and whatever works for you. It's not a paintbrush. I got these at Ikea and they work perfect for uh, these situations. They ended up getting it for like a dollar or two. Because I know that they can be pricey if you go somewhere else to do it. So I'm going to continue to cook this for another three minutes and I'll see you guys shortly. Alright guys, it's ready. We're done and I'm ready to serve. And I Actually, I'm really hungry and this smells so good. I'm ready to eat. Let's get ready to grub. <laughs> I couldn't resist. It took a bite out of this and it's amazing, but I want to show you guys inside. Mm. Yeah, these go by like that. How many have you had? This is my first one and then right now with you guys, I'm going to have another. <laughs> Thanks for making dinner. And that's how I make chicken skewers. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. And if you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, take the time to subscribe and to click that bell for notifications. It'll let you know when I upload. If you guys are still making these recipes, I love getting your pictures of what you guys have made with your family or for yourselves. <laughs> so if you can continue to send them on Twitter or Instagram so that I can post them right here. goodness the combination of this is so fresh it's not heavy it's just perfect the rice tastes like lime cilantro rice and it's not overpowered by some ways that I tend to make it it's just gonna be perfect for this blend guys the slaw the freshness 
I think you guys are gonna love this one. So I wanna thank you guys so much for joining our club, for being here for this recipe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!